Welcome all to Spotlight Sessions, where we shine a light on incredible organizations and the work that they do. I'm your host, Josh Basil. I'm a C45 quadriplegic. I'm paralyzed below my shoulders. I'm a disability rights advocate and lawyer focused on breaking down barriers to access and inclusion for persons with disabilities. Today, we're going to learn more about Stefan Lebois and the Valuable 500. Welcome, Stefan. Hi, Josh. It's, uh, it's great to be here, and thank you for having me. As an audio description, I am a uh, average looking white guy with uh, brown glasses and graying hair. Um, behind me is a background, it's like a brown divider background, and I, I, and I got a gray shirt on. Awesome, awesome. And uh, so I would love, let's, let's continue to learn more about you. So tell, us, tell us about yourself. Well, um, you know, uh, so we can start at the beginning. So I've been in the disability rights space for about uh, 10 years um, and have worked across a number of different. Um, issue areas related to, dis to disability inclusion. Um, I started out in uh, inclusive higher education, working at a think tank at an American university called the Institute on Disability and Public Policy. Um, and, you know, my journey really started there. Afterwards, um, I ended up getting a master's at uh, UMass Boston at the School of uh, Global Inclusion and Social Development, um, which, which was a brand new school at the time. Um, and uh, if, if, uh, if any of your uh, listeners or subscribers are interested in getting a master's or PhD in the area of disability inclusion, highly recommend uh, they take a look at that school. Um, and, um, you know, ended up working for the ARC of the United States, which is a wonderful uh, organization based in the US that focuses on um, protecting and promoting the rights of folks with intellectual and developmental disabilities. And then ended up at the Valuable 500, where I'm currently um, uh, the director of partnerships. So I oversee our um, our connections to the disability community, um, as well as, you know, cons consultants and service providers in the disability community that provide services to business. As, you know, folks may or may not know, uh, the Valuable 500 as a membership of, of, uh, of uh, large global organizations, um, businesses around the world. And so, you know, I am in many ways, or my, my office is kind of a, a bridge builder between the disability community, folks who work in it, and the private sector that's represented in, in our membership. So the valuable 500, mm -hmm. I see the 500 is, is that 500 a limited number or is it, <laughs> is it kind of just? Yeah, <laughs> good question. So I think, um, you know, we announced our 500th company on May 18th of this year, right? A bit like it was, it was a two-year campaign started in 2019 at Davos um, at the World Economic Forum. Um, and so we are, uh, but it, it is an evolving list. I think we're, we're looking for companies that are, um, that, uh, who are in our membership that are really committed and want to stand by the public commitments that their CEOs made to advance disability inclusion. Um, we, we want, we want those companies to remain engaged, remain involved. I think that, you know, there may be companies that, you know, and this isn't for sure, but there may be companies who choose to, uh, um, for one reason or another, that the Valuable 500 isn't quite the fit that they wanted. There's also, you know, there could be turnover at the leadership level where, you know, their commitment that one CEO made may not be, uh, uh, may not be relevant um, uh, for, the, for their successor. So there's a number of different factors that may have, you know, companies choose uh, to, to discontinue their membership at the Valuable 500. Um, and in that, so our community will evolve over time. Um, and, you know, eventually we'd like for, uh, uh, to include more businesses besides just the 500, right? There are thousands, you know, tens of thousands of organizations that technically fit, you know, the valuable 500s, you know, profile company um, that we would love to get involved. Um, it's, uh, it's a question of what are they prepared to do to advance disability inclusion? And are they prepared to be part of this global movement? Um, so, yeah. So if there are, if they, if a business wants to be part of that valuable 500 list, what, what are they expected to, to be able to do or be able to commit to, or what does that look Good like? Good question. And by the way, if you hear a, a bit of whimpering behind me, that's my dog being very cross at me for not paying attention to her. So, uh, the, um, the, uh, so all of our companies, when they become a member, first of all, <clears throat> it is completely free to join. There's no financial commitment. The only companies that have made a financial commitment are what we call our iconics. So it's 13 companies at the moment that have made a financial commitment towards building out certain products 
um, and services that the rest of the Valuable 500 mem membership will be able to use to advance their disability goals, right? So specific products that we're developing with them that they're helping that they're putting resources towards. Um, but the rest of the 500 join for free. So that's, you know, um, you know that, that part of it. But then every company that joins must um, provide a written commitment statement from their CEO to advance, you know, stating that they will advance disability inclusion in XYZ arena, whether that's in, you know, improving or making uh, the customer service experience more accessible, making their workplace more accessible, uh, improving their digital accessibility, um, or, or any number of different paradigms that, you know, disability inclusion kind of covers. Um, we ask our companies to submit a commitment statement. And so we're actually in the process of looking at those commitment statements and seeing, okay, like on a global level, what are companies really interested in? Like, what are they actually working on? What are they committing to as part of, as being part of this movement? And so we're actually, uh, with a university in, 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 um, in, uh, in the UK, working on identifying those trends, those global trends that we'll be able to, to speak to um, uh, later on this year or the beginning of next year is really when those, and uh, when we'll finalize that, that data. Um, but then, you know, aside from that, Josh, it's really like, in addition to the commit to the commitment statement, like we're, we're looking for actual action and we're looking for, for action behind the words. So, you know, we're, my team, um, and, and, uh, uh, headed by Crosby Cromwell, who's my boss, we're working on connecting with all 500 of our companies multiple times a year, just to see how they're doing. If they need any help from us, well, how can, how can we support them as kind of like a convener of resources and, you know, convener of con conversation, how do we support our companies to get from A to B? Um, you know, if, if it's, that. whether it's like, you know, working on that original commitment that they made in that statement or beyond, like if they're like, you know, we already did this, let's move forward. Like bet, what do you want to do next? You know, like we're, we're happy to, we're happy to support you. So it seems like you guys are on a journey together yeah. and, you know, so much for myself, you know, being paralyzed below my shoulders so too often, the only place you really see change or real change for persons with disabilities when laws are passed or legislation and things of that nature. But like in 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 my eyes, in my opinion, it's it's like you need to get on the ground and you need to like get to where the people are, and the people are are within the businesses where they are supporting the employees or they're actually creating products that serve the community, the persons with disabilities or any person uh, of any yeah. ability. So like getting, getting corporations, I, I've, I love what you guys do because this is what needs to happen to really change the conversation. And, and it, it seems like w with you having, you know, the valuable 500, you're able to kind of whisper and plant seeds and really help give, give the different elements that corporations yeah. need to be able to, to, to move forward and be better and, be more inclusive and it's just it's almost like that you have to get a get it within their dna or within their culture for them to really understand it and then it spreads spreads out to all sectors of of that business do you want to talk more about that yeah i mean thank you for saying that it's <clears throat> you know um what we find in our conversations with companies is there's a great deal of um apprehension of doing things the wrong way. There's, uh, for some companies, there's even apprehensive apprehension about getting started. They don't know where to start. They don't know who to turn to. Um, they have, you know, they don't know where to access resources to help them along in their journey. So we are not in the, in the consulting business. In fact, I came from kind of a business consulting realm. And in this role, we're here to actually connect the consultants, the experts to our companies to help them along. Um, and to eliminate that fear. And so what we're trying to do is engage with our companies to really identify the, the pain points and be like, look, we get it. It is scary. It, it can be a scary thing. Um, but it's also, you know, it's also something that is not only the right thing to do, but it's right for your business. There are so many economic and business, you know, driven arguments, you know, to support uh, disability inclusion these days that like, it's no longer something that is nice to have. It's no longer something that, you know, folks can ignore um, as part of a greater DEI program or whatever. This is, this is something that needs to be happening. Um, and so we're, we're here at the, at the Valuable to provide resources, to provide the theoretical and the connections 
to eliminate fear, promote competence, promote um, action, um, and uh, and 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 kind of uh, and, and trailblaze from from the from the top up. I think, or from the top down rather. There's a lot of really wonderful work that's been done uh, through ERGs now, the grassroots level um, within you know many companies around the world. Um, and you know our whole raison d'être is is due to the fact that you know leadership has been largely kind of absent from those conversations for a long time. And so we're right now we're trying to um, we're trying to bring that conversation in a meaningful way to leadership so that they can get as involved as their employees have been uh, for so many for so much time. Um, so I hope that hope that makes sense. That's that's awesome. And so let's say, let's say you're a business, you're listening in right now. Do you have to be invited to be a part of the Valuable 500? Or can they reach out to you and say, we would like to be a part of this? Re- reach out to us. We're, um, our, our door, our virtual door is always open. Um, we're always down to, to speak to people who are interested in getting more involved in this space. Um, ideally, it would be everybody, uh, but not everybody is necessarily at the point in their journey where they feel comfortable making this step, which is okay. But we're hoping that this initial, you know, if we can call it a cohort of 500 companies that we have now, this this collective of companies, will serve um, as kind of a <clears throat> a trailblazer, especially you know at the leadership level. 500 leaders uh, become you know trailblazers for the rest of the global um, uh, business community to follow. Um, and you know within our collective, we have a number of really you know some of the biggest global brands um, in the world uh, who are, who are putting their, you know, foot down, putting their stakes in the ground, being like this, you know, are the global business community's general lack of awareness or lack of action as a collective needs, needs to, needs to start now. Uh, We need, we need to get involved now. All right. So once again, with that involvement, let's say you said the valuable 500, What's the website? Where do people go? How do people yeah, get to so you? So it's um, www.thevaluable500.com. Um, you can also email us at uh, partnerships at thevaluable500.com. Um, and, you know, generally reach out to me or reach out to my uh, to my boss, uh, Crosby Cromwell on LinkedIn. We're uh, quite responsive there as well. Um, and we actually have quite a large um, uh, following on, on LinkedIn. It's where we post most of our company facing uh, materials there. Um, but generally, you know, we, again, we, th- this is something that we are starting with the hope that this will become a, uh, this will become a larger movement. This will become, um, a, uh, a movement that will self-sustain after a time, you know, at the end of the day, you know, we, as the valuable 500 should not exist, you know, and I know that's kind of a weighty. You guys, go ahead. You guys are the catalyst. You guys are, are are literally mobilizing boots, wheels, voices, minds on the ground to get this done. You got You got to start oh, somewhere. Yes, yes, and no. There have been so many. There are so many organizations now, and so many organizations before us that have done fabulous work. We're just approaching it slightly differently, um, and so we're in many ways we're complementary to what many organizations are doing out there. Um, and, uh, you know, I hope that, I hope that shows through, I hope we're, you know, folks are able to see that we're here to, you know, be, be your friend in the sandbox and not somebody who's trying to compete, um, for, 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 for airtime. We're here to be a resource and a connector. Um, but again, going back to like, we don't, you know, at the end of the day, the, the 500, we don't want, we don't want to be here forever. We want eventually for the, the global business community to be able to work together organically and form, you know, and, and form their own version of the, what, what the valuable 500 is. Um, but, you know, see this as a priority, see this as a leadership priority. And we're starting to do that. Right. Um, but, but it, we're still, we're still a ways away. And that's why we remain here and trying to activate our companies in a number of different ways to, to keep this on the leadership agenda. Um, and, uh, but overall, it's just a, it's, it's, it's an exciting time to be in this field. And Josh, I think you would agree um, with all the wonderful work that y'all are doing and accessibility. Like, you, you know that there's a huge appetite for this stuff. Uh, you know, I think it's our job, like the accessibilities of the world, the valuable 500s, the, you know, the business disability forums, the, you know, purple spaces of the world to harness 
that energy and that excitement and 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 to point it in a direction that you know is 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 uh, achieves the greatest impact absolutely working together coming together and focusing on on a collective mission we we all we all want the end goal the same end goal um and it's just it's getting there together um i i love that and i i would love to like also know more from you since joining the valuable 500 what what are what is your proudest accomplishment we could, Tell us a story. Hmm. So, I mean, generally, uh, you know, organizationally, I think um, the our proudest accomplishment is to get 500 CEOs to even think about disability inclusion. I think that is the biggest yeah. hurdle. Um, and that was something monumental that um, the team was able to achieve in such a short amount of time, relatively. Um, and, you know, that's not just the immediate, st- you know, folks we have on staff who are like, you know, truly magnificent human beings that were able to accomplish this stuff. But it's also, you know, the other disability organizations, it's also folks from the business community who went to bat for us to say, hey, this is a really important thing to, to focus on disability inclusion. That's, that's, you know, this is one of the last frontiers and we, we need to, we, we need to pay attention to this stuff. Um, so it, like that, this was really a collective effort um, that of course was catalyzed by, by us, but really um, is owed to the entire disability community and, and many people within the business community. Um, so that's a huge accomplishment. Um, but then, you know, uh, with us, you know, for, for phase two of our project, so phase one was getting the signatures, phase two is activating all those companies. Um, in phase two, uh, you know, we, we developed, uh, personally, um, I was kind of, uh, I took the lead in developing this global directory of uh, business disability um, consultants and service providers that will really act as kind of a, almost like a, um, a, yeah, like a, a yellow pages, uh, so to speak it's yeah, to say for, that. for, uh, for businesses to call upon, um, regardless, you know, uh, depending on what their pain points are, if they're looking for a built environment, uh, uh, built environment accessibility specialist, if they're looking for an employment disability specialist, if they're looking for digital accessibility specialists and so on we'll have a directory full of those people from all over the world, right? So geographic representation is super, super important to be able to um, help our global companies at the local and at the global level. I mean, we're much like the Valuable 500s um, collective, that community is ever evolving and we're gonna have another, we did that through an RFP process. We, we you know, create this co- uh, community through an RFP process back in you know July, we're gonna hold another one in April. So for all the folks out there who provide services to the private sector as, you know, related to disability inclusion and accessibility, hit me up and be part of that next RFP because we're all about strengthening our community and, and providing value to our businesses and also having whatever investment our businesses, our, 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 our member companies uh, want to put towards this stuff, be funneled back into dis- disabled run organizations or, um, or owned organizations because that's really important to us. We don't touch any of that money. That's not, that's not what we... That doesn't factor into our calculus at all. We're here to just establish those bridges, and then you know, hope it you know, hope that we add value to both sides of the equation. Very, very generous matchmaker. Now, yeah, I mean, Dude. but but at the same time, Josh, like you know, the reality is, I think our our companies look to organizations like Accessibility or like Valuable Five Hundred for referrals. We are their trusted um, advisors in who to look for. So we're just providing a shortcut for them, you know, for their procurement process so that they're not, you know, uh, going on, you know, trusting, trusting Google or, or, or you know, having to, uh, having to, you know, get a bunch of procurement folks who aren't familiar with the disability community, who don't really know what they're looking for, um, uh, do that instead. So we're kind of providing a bit of a shortcut all the while understanding that our list isn't complete and there are plenty of other folks out there that we haven't connected with yet. But this is my call to have those folks join us and, you know, be part of this directory. Um, and the other, what I should also say, Josh, is, um, you know, we were, were we formed this directory with the hope that this wouldn't just be like, you know, a B2B kind of like, you know, binary, like transactional, you know, uh, list of people, but rather this could become a community in its own right. So many 
uh, I think so much value is lost when uh, collaboration isn't achieved between companies in the business disability um, uh, consulting space. Um, and I'm hoping that creating this directory will in fact create a community of folks who want to share practices, who want to collaborate, develop stacked solutions. So like if Accessibility suddenly would want to partner with, you know, uh, an organization that's special, specialized in the built environment, who then wanted to partner with, you know, some employment specialists, suddenly you have a, like a multifaceted stacked solution that could attack, you know, the pro like the disability inclusion problem at, you know, in, in a company from six different sides. And that's what I think companies are looking for now. It's not just the one-off specialist, but to have, you know, a multi-tiered solution that can help them solve multiple pain points uh, across their supply chain or across their, you know, uh, uh, different departments or across geographies as well. And um, that's another huge factor. It makes so much sense. It's, it's, it's a brilliant way to address a problem and move proactively in the right direction to come up with solutions. Like it's, you're, you're putting all the pieces together to be able to like get to the final destination, which to me is just exciting as a person with a disability, with a significant disability, there's, you know, changes, changes that can be made on a, on a corporate level, on a global level. It just, it, it transforms lives. It creates more independence. It creates more opportunities. It creates better futures. So, you know, I would, I would love to ask one more question and really this is kind of to all the businesses that you do kind of represent or speak to, or could invite in just like, if you had one message to send to like businesses hmm. around the world, what, what would that be? Man, I got like a ton of messages <laughs> because, you know, at the end of the day, you know, um, we always say it's it's a very overused kind of catchy term, but the disability inclusion journey, right? It's very hard to step away from because it is such a wide spectrum of activity. And indeed, like such a, you know, there are varying degrees and varying stages in that journey. Um, but, you know, even if you haven't started yet, or even if you're like a global leader, in disability inclusion, you're still on that spectrum of activity. And so what I will say is, you know, regardless of what level you're at right now, keep at it. Don't rest on your laurels. There's always something to do. Just like every company thinks of different ways, or every successful company, I should say, constantly tries to evolve and iterate on their customer service experience or their product offerings or things like that. Disability inclusion is this is the same way. Um, you know, I think we've only, in terms of our real understanding of how to make workplaces inclusive, really, really inclusive to all, and our understanding of how to make the customer service as experience, uh, 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 customer service experience as accessible and inclusive as it can be, our understanding of, of both those things, like we're just scratching the surface. And so encouraging companies to continue to evolve their thinking and continue to work at it, continue to work, even if you're just getting started, work, chop that wood, because, you know, that, that is, that is what, that, that is um, the critical, the critical thing. It, it's not just implementing a program, a pilot program, you know, for six months and then resting on your laurels, thinking that it's going to sustain you got to keep working at it, you know. It's, it's not going to be one and done. It's, 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 like I said, it's evolving. Well, Stefan, thank you so much for joining me today. And this was a fun talk. It was a powerful talk. And uh, thank you again for being, being on this journey thank with you. us. Thank you, and Josh, let's, let's, uh, let, let, let's change and go hit the links. We got, we got some golfing to do. <laughs> oh, yeah, let's slingshot golf. Slingshot golf, I love it. All right, well, take All care, right, Stefan. Take uh, care.